You want to learn about building a business, huh? Well, this, this discussion is the business of building a business for businesses with business. And we have the amazing game hers in the house. Hey, y'all. I will let you hey. get and then I'll be back and we'll field some questions. So remember, if you got questions, just post them in the chat and, and we'll get to them after they are done with their discussion. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. Uh, hey, y'all. Thank you so much for investing your time with us today. My name is Heather Awida, and I'm the moderator of today's panel on the business of building a business in gaming. Uh, a little bit of background. Uh, I'm the CEO and one of the four co-founders of The Gamers. I'm sure the panel will get into this a bit more, but in a nutshell, The Gamers is a media company and social networking platform and community that connects and amplifies women who game and women who work in the gaming space. My background is in community building uh, as well as toy design. Uh, in fact, prior to launching The Gamers, I was designing toys in the gaming and esports space for Alcon, the visionary behind Pokemon and Cabbage Patch and a bunch of other 80s hits that um, if, I, if I say much more about, I will date myself. But today we have an amazing panel with the Gamers team. We're all be, we'll all be talking about trends in, in business um, that hopefully um, will give you a little insight and maybe things that directly impact your businesses. So here's the format just to give you an idea of what to expect. We'll take a few moments where each of my awesome co-founders will briefly introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their background in the industry. I'll kick off the conversation asking questions that will hopefully draw out some of the high level themes and trends we, we kind of are all talking about in the business of gaming space. And then the second half, we'll open it up and kick it out to all you to ask whatever questions you have. So on that note, Verda, I kind of, I, 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 I'll start with a question, but really um, right before we came on the panel, Verda and I were toying with what should be her roller derby name. <laughs> but right now we've come up with Vicious V. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. So I would love for the audience to actually share any roller derby names. I do not roller derby anymore. I used to. I did not make it far enough to have a name um, because of an injury. Um, my name is Verda. I'm the chief community officer at The Gamers. And... I say that I am all love with appropriate doses of rage, and that kind of connects to why it is that I am really um, excited to be a founder of this company and to be um, heading up our community and our content. And so um, my background is all over the place, but very much in community organizing, social um, social justice work around anti-racism and anti-oppression. I was a school principal. Maybe some of the my former students are out there listening to this. And, um, and recently, I guess like later in life um, started founding some companies and so I'm really excited to talk more about what it's like to um, be a woman in the space be a black woman in the space um, and a lot of ideas and thoughts so I will kick it on over to Laura hey y'all my name is Laura I'm the chief innovation officer here at the gamers and um, so by trade I am actually a middle school math teacher Crazy, right? Um, then I had kids and that all that all changed. Um, I became a new mom and I realized I was a bit lonely, couldn't find other moms. So I decided to create a business to help me. So that's where I started a business called Mommy Bites. And that's how we got three out of the four of us you see on this call together. We all grew this company. It was a social and educational platform for new moms. We worked together for 10 years from 2006 till 2016 from the ground up, built the business and then sold it. Um, so we are, are experts in community building and event planning. And I'm just so happy to be back with the, with the gang here at The Gamers, starting a community for women who game. Rebecca, last but not least. Hi, I'm Rebecca Dixon. I am CMO and the fourth co-founder of The Gamers. As Laura mentioned, I joined Heather and Laura at Mommy Bites. And prior to that, my original professional background is in advertising and sales. I worked at a media buying agency for many years and then did ad sales for Turner and CBS. And then was at Mommy Bites for a while. And after that was um, doing a little bit of consulting, bouncing around a little bit 
And it turns out, so my family has a connection to the esports world. My dad and my brother are part owners of Team Envy and the Dallas Fuel. So I have been a big fan of esports for a long time, have known a lot about the gaming industry and more and more just became really fascinated by it. Um, so it was it was so fun to get to join join the industry um, and really hopefully make a difference. So thanks for having us. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, it just occurred to me that we've all known each other and worked together so long that when we first met, none of us had glasses. <laughs> yeah, I did though. I've you always did. had them. I've had oh, them since I was in fourth grade. <laughs> Actually, Heather, I had them too. I just didn't wear them. <laughs> Also, Verda have had them since like right. around fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Dan and I last off stage were um, were comparing glasses, and they were not this cool when we had them, right, Rebecca? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, no. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not even a little bit. No. I went, I went right to contacts as soon as I can, and then I went to lace and then I came back. I feel you. Um, so. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone that's joining us. I see lots of fun comments um, bubbling up in, in the comment section. So thank y'all. Um, it's, you know, we'll open it up to questions, but if, if you have questions as we're, as we're chatting, drop them in the chat. Uh, I thought maybe to kick things off, Verda, I, I'd start with you and was thinking perhaps you could talk a little bit about the mission of the gamers and how the intentionality of this mission helped grow our business. So, um, all right, so when Heather approached me, we, we've known each other for a while, um, and we have two um, sons that are in college now. And so I say that I game because of them. I gamed a little bit before that. Um, there's this whole debate about who's a gamer and who's not, right? We could get into that. And I just wanted to, um, I wanted to make sure that we were creating a community that was like super inclusive and that a lot of times people think that just because you have a woman in the room, it's diverse. And actually within who we are is where the diversity lives, right? And so our company is, it's women led, it is for women, it's for femme identifying humans, um, nine, um, non gender conforming folks that are comfortable in spaces that center women is what we say. And so then we welcome all that want to get down with that mission. And so when I was approached and um, with the idea over drinks, we like cocktails. Um, <laughs> Uh, I said, you know what, I'd be really interested as long as we make sure that we are as inclusive and that we're always thinking about that and that diversity, equity, inclusion is in the DNA of what we do. Um, so that's just something that's been important to me all of um, all of my life um, and for much of my career. Did I answer the question, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for, for those of you listening, this is literally how our business is going to We'll start with a theme and then we're, we're all over, all the, over the place. Yeah. yeah, you did. You did. Okay, and, awesome. um, and, thank, and thank you for that. Oh, and the, the last thing I'll add is that we also wanted to make sure that we were for purpose and for profit, right? So we know that our existence exists because of all of the trailblazers that came before us, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many amazing humans, women in the space that have done these amazing things. And we wanted to make sure that in this billion dollar industry that we were coming in for profit, for purpose, so that we could hire women, that we could hire um, femme identifying people, that we could do all of that stuff and see women at the forefront. So I just wanted to add that also. No, thank you for adding that. And actually, I, Rebecca, I'd love you to chime in here because you, you, I know, are on Clubhouse a lot. You and Verda, and you, you are on many, many panels, and you get this question a lot: um, why we are for purpose and for profit. So I'd love to give you the opportunity to flesh that out more. Sure. So uh, Verda, you know, Verda started the conversation off exactly as I would, um, and I think. Listen, we we built our own community building skills um, in life, but also at Mommy Bites. I believe so strongly in the power of collaboration, support, um, and you know, trying to find companies, nonprofits, individuals, and really any entity that is aligned with um, what we're doing to. Um, to make a, a bigger difference everywhere. And so it's what we did in the parenting world. You know, it, it, you wouldn't think that the parenting industry and the gaming industry have have much in common, but it's really more of a life thing. If you can find people you align with, everybody, everybody generally, you know, kind of wins, right? And so 
<clears throat> in the gaming world, once we realized, you know, and learned and, and digested and interviewed and all of the things we did at the beginning, um, the situation regarding women, um, we also realized we were not the first people addressing this topic by any stretch of the imagination. What we did think is that we had a an angle that could take all of the incredible initiatives going on. You know, we 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 overuse the word, but it is worth overusing. Amplify, amplify what's going on because for whatever reason, it's hard to even guess why it's not being amplified, and it is more now, and it will continue to be more more. And so, we could, every single day, I think you know what drives me um, in in you know in my role at at gamers is finding new people that we can amplify and new initiatives and new organizations and so whether it's some you know a a really big company or or nonprofit or or person you know executive or or not executive or employee or developer anybody that we can say hey what are you doing and how can we support you um that goes right back to the, um, you know, the reason why we founded our company. And uh, that also does include like brands, for example. So we're in a really neat place in um, the sort of history of, of brands where you're seeing a lot of brands really try to figure out what's, what is the most authentic way to meet potential customers. And I think what a lot of them are realizing, which is so um, great is the best way to meet customers is to try to you know see what 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 in, what initiatives and what issues are our potential customers what what's important to them, and so because of that you have a lot of brands getting behind um, the same things that we're behind, um, and so all for all of these reasons being a you know a company a for profit company but we really like to say for purpose means that we can maybe move the needle we have the resources to to financially and um, and, you know, in every way, support anybody else who's supporting making the gaming industry and the gaming world a better place for women. Re Rebecca, I, I, I love how you summarize that. And for everyone out there listening, I think one of the main takeaways is that you really can be both. I think kind of our, our culture and society likes to pigeonhole us and say, like, oh, you're about community. You must be a not for profit. Um, or you're just a, a business, a corporation, a company, oh, you're just about making money. And I think what we're trying to do is infuse both. Um, and one of the themes that we try to always incorporate in our decision making is um, making sure that we pay women and humans in this industry, I think is really important. And also, um, to financially support a lot of the not-for-profits that we work with to our best of our ability. Again, we are a new company. We're barely a year old. Um, but our goal is, as we grow, um, to use our resources and finances to, to, to help in those two ways. So um, switching gears a little bit, um, as I just said, Laura, I know the Gamers is just a little over a year old. We're still babies. Uh, but how did you grow the brand? How would you say, because you, you were kind of instrumental in this, um, grow the brand in such a short time? And, and how did you create virality, um, especially with the Gamer Awards? And maybe you could talk a little bit about what the Gamer Awards are. Yeah, sure. So early on in our birth of the company, we, we really wanted to come out with something unique and original that really amplified and celebrated our community. And we know there's different types of awards out there for all different topics. And even within gaming, there are awards. Um, but we noticed that there was no awards um, program out there that l focused on women and women in gaming and, and all parts of gaming, content creation, development, um, you know, not just you know, all parts of gaming. And we decided, let's do it. This is it. This is what. We, this is exactly who we are. We want to acknowledge, and and amplify and celebrate women in gaming. And that is how the Gamers Awards was born. Um, so that we happened that we had that in the fall. And I think um, 
an important part when you have an event, if you are a business and you have an event, what I want to, what I want to say here is how did we, how did we get the word out to everybody? How did the, our, the, the awards went viral and I'll tell you exactly how we did it. And this is something that anyone who has an event or something they want to get the word out about should do. So we, you know, in our journey had partnered with different companies, different nonprofits, different people. And when the awards launched, it's not like the week before we just sent everyone a group mass email and said, hey, y'all, we're having the awards, the Gamers Awards would love for you to send, you know, or let your community know about it. Because if we did that, we would have heard crickets. So the key when wanting to spread the word about an event is having, making it as easy as possible for the person or, or business to spread the word for you. And what, what do I mean by that? Well, if you'd like them to post something on Instagram, send them an image with a beautiful branding of your event and send them the exact text that they can use for their Instagram. Same with Twitter, same with an email. So you make it as easy as possible. So literally all they'd have to do is cut and paste what you give them and it's out there. And um, and of course, make sure all images or any type of you know branding that you give these people is, is well done because people wanna be proud of what they post on their socials and be proud of what they're representing. So I think, um, I think that is my big advice to um, people who want to have an event or even like a webinar or anything you're doing out there, even if it's a, you know, anything, um, just make it as easy as possible for people to help you spread the word about the event. Laura, forgive me if you said this, but did you say this, the actual stats of when you, when I know you said it went viral, but the actual stats, Oh, so yeah. So basically we had within two, three days, over 600 nominations. And then in the voting process, we had over 75,000 people vote. And we got there because we made it as easy as possible for our 600 nominees to spread the word about their nomination. So exactly what I said before, we sent every single 600 nominee saying, congratulations, let your community know. And guess what? They did. They were proud and they wanted to. So and that's what led us to get over 75,000 votes. Um, and that's that's how it all that's how the virality happened. It was super, super cool. I don't know if Verda um, or Rebecca want to chime in here, but um what was fun to watch um, and important to watch was we, we, our business philosophy in our past business that um, we had sold before and this business is we like to be the, the least important people in the room. Um, we like to just step back and, and really highlight our community and celebrate them. Um, and our awards really did kind of, I, I thought they were a great kind of, overview picture of our whole community. I mean, we had women from all over, which was really fun. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have a pandemic puppy, so sometimes I have to be on mute so that you all don't hear Murphy barking and screaming, asking, where are you? Why aren't you paying attention to me? Um, <laughs> but I would definitely say that for me, it's important to be able to see myself represented in the work that I do. And I think that the awards, um, the Gamers Awards is probably the first um, was one of the biggest moments where I think so many people could see themselves represented in the nominees as well as in the winners of the awards. And I think about that for young people out in the world, right? So like young people can see that, oh, wow, look, I see myself. I, I see I see that there's a place where I'm being honored because in order to actually even do something like start a business, I didn't found businesses until I was older in life because I didn't see it as something that was possible for me. Um, and so I think that the same thing holds true for seeing, you know, awards shows that represent you and so we had we just had a really really diverse um, representation they're on our youtube channel i think you can go mm -hmm. and watch our awards so if you wanted to go check it out and we're in the process of gearing up for um for this year's awards which we're really really excited about um yeah 2021 bigger better more women to celebrate 
I can jump in too and say, you know, we've talked about this a little bit already, but one of our other sort of main, um, you know, things that we that we use to drive decisions is to reach out to our community and get feedback from them. Because again, we want to be producing content and creating community around what our community wants us to create. So to that end, we are just in the very beginning phases of the awards planning process. And last year, um, they were they were such they were we, you know we were really surprised at how how well, how well they were received, um, and this year we feel so honored to have the experience of last year and to have had the experience of another year and an, an, you know that amount of community growth in that time, and so what we're really excited to do this year is to reach out to the community and sort of the industry at the beginning of the planning process to get feedback on some of the things about how the awards should go themselves. So, you know, um, we also always like to admit maybe when we didn't do things exactly perfectly, like maybe we forgot a couple of awards last year that we should have included. We got some feedback about some that we, people would like us to include this year. We are, uh, you know, we are adding some awards. We are going to even add, we're going to put out us, you know, some sample ideas and get some feedback. And we're just really excited about that because again, like Heather said, we're the least important people in the room. We want to produce what our community wants. So it's going to be bigger, better, and just as authentic as we can make them this year. So something fun to look forward to. And, and um, in terms of, you know, again, this is about the business of building a business. I think taking feedback from your community as you build that same community is one of the biggest things that we believe in. Yeah, and, and if I can add one thing to that too, it's about centering who or what your purpose is, right? Mm -hmm. So I think while it's important what Heather said about we're the least important people in the room, we also are women. We also then bring femme identifying people. We have um, you know non-gender conforming people that consult for us. We do lots of things that include and have the people that we want to be amplified centered in that. So I think that's really important. And I think that once you start to share it, you'll be surprised how many people will be like, hey, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Um, and so I just wanted to share that. I love that. And, and, you know, as, as Rebecca said, um, this is a, a panel on the business of building a business. So I'd love each of you to chime in with what you think the first step is for a startup um, and perhaps most important hire. Um, and I say that because I'm hoping and thinking that we have people listening here that may be in early stages of fleshing out a business idea they have and may want to know, okay, I have this idea, like now what? So I'd love to kick to all, all of you to, to share your now what could be, they could be different from, from, you know, each of you, it could be some overlap, but um, Laura, why don't we start with you? Yeah. So if you're, if you're in the early stages of uh, creating a business, first of all, if you decided to do it and you're on your way, kudos to you, that is the hardest part. Many people have ideas, not many people follow through with them. So if you're already doing it, amazing. If you're thinking about it, stop thinking about it. That's my advice. Just do it. Um, don't think too hard. I have to admit, when I started Mommy Bites, I did not think, oh, I'm going to start a business that's going to grow and have people come on board and monetize. I just did it. I started simple and I did it. So for those of you who, you know, just, just do it. That's definitely my number one suggestion. Um, then for those of you who are just starting to do it, my next advice is fake it till you make it. Um, I, I said it, I said it. And what I mean by that is you are awesome and you are badass. And just because you just started and maybe not a lot of people know about you or what your service is or what your product is, doesn't mean you are not incredible. So what that means is pretend you have thousands of followers in everything that you do, your branding, it should be beautiful. Be proud of who you are and who you represent. You know, people see what you put out there on socials, on emails, even if you have 10 people on your mailing list, make your emails beautiful and make them um, appealing and, you know, just do it. And you will see over time, if you continue to put out quality content, 
you will grow. So it's, you know, it's, it's building a business doesn't take, you know, three seconds. Um, it, it takes time, but if you're willing to put in the hard work and if you're willing to, um, do what you do best, which is create whatever your services, your content is, are you a writer, anything you'll get there. Um, but persistence and, um, and hard work. Yeah. I, I want to pause for a moment. I do want to keep going with this theme because it's important, but I want to, I want to just pause for some questions that are coming in. Um, so we, just, we there's two questions I, I want to get to, and then we'll circle back to um, what we were just talking about. But one is, um, someone wants to know, do we receive backlash for what we do? If so, how do we deal with it? Um, Verda, I'll kick this off to you. Um, yes. <laughs> I think that um, the, the, the short answer is yes. And I think that um, it's really connected to the other question for me, right? So I, I, as a black woman, mm. um, yes, I've had great ideas my whole life. And sometimes I have not, imposter syndrome is real, but also the way that systems are set up and structures are set up are real also. And so for that, it's one, finding people that you can talk to that are your support system and that will speak positively about you in a room before you even enter it or if you will never enter it like there are people like that and one of the ways to find those people is one your network and your family so tell them what you're doing if you're proud of it share it with them because you will be surprised what family member might be like hey i'm so proud of you or so excited for you here's some money for that or oh you know what i have this friend who has this office space that they said that they don't they don't have anyone using it do you want it they said that it was free or that it's super reduced rate. Share the message with the people close to you about what you want to do. The second part around imposter syndrome, and that's connected to backlash. Um, I think that we get over, overwhelmingly positive feedback for what we're doing. Don't get me wrong. Like, I actually think that it's more of that. And the point of that is don't focus on the backlash all the time. It's going to be there. Anything that you do in the world, 100% of the people are not going to like it. And 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 I think that speaking about being women in the space, those things are some more comments about like, oh, like how do you find other women to game with? I think putting it out there and knowing that, yes, there's backlash, there's toxicity, it exists. And being armed and ready for it is really important. Um, that, that's what I would say to the backlash question. So, mm -hmm. yes. And we really try to focus on the things that are positive and surround ourselves with amplifying and then just like dismantling it, saying, OK, great, that's backlash. How do we how do we counter that with something positive like the awards that we could put out into the world? How do we counter that with something positive like creating a platform for women to, you know, an app for them to connect with each other? and with other people who are not going to give them all of that backlash right so take that thing and turn it into the positive um so that's what i would say and i just want to add something to that verda something um on a side note let me tell you something if you're getting backlash kudos for you because that means you're growing and you're getting big mm -hmm. so backlash sucks everyone gets it and almost feel like, damn, I hit a milestone. I got backlash. Yes. <laughs> it's so it's so true, right? Like when you have, we were like, oh my, like when you have some trolls or when like those things start to happen, I stay out of the comment section of a lot of things in my personal <laughs> life as well as in like in life. But it's true. It means that you're actually touching a nerve, something really important that has to happen. Yep. Um, provided that what you're putting out into the world is a positive thing, right? So not trying to hurt or harm right. anyone. Yeah. I, I will say also it's, it helps having co-founders when that happens. I mean, we we are in an unusual company because we have four co-founders um, and there's no hierarchy in our company. We all make equal decisions. But it, it does enable, I, th I think for me personally, to be able to laugh easier at some of the stuff that comes in because I can call, you know, the three of you and be like, oh my gosh, I think I called Laura the other week <laughs> and someone put, I like just actually laughed out loud at this. Someone put, um, I'd rather slam my fingers in a drawer than join an all women gaming community or something. And I was like, I, I was like, man, that is some, like, wow, that is that's super intense, dude. Like, okay. Um, anyway, it's, I, I, do, I do think that helps, but. Heather, I think it's also worth noting though, when we first started in the industry, we did so much research and interviews. We, one of the biggest, feedback points we got is you are going to receive backlash. It will be hard. Yeah. You know, it, that we got that a lot. And at least I will say for me, 
the amount of backlash we've gotten has been less than I expected based wow. on that. Thanks. And this industry is for the most part, very open to this conversation. And well, and, and, and I would say, of course, we've gotten backlash. Everybody does. Um, but you know, for the most part, it, it, it's been a pretty positive experience. And I just think that's worth noting that the backlash hasn't been terrible. Agree. Um, Rebecca, um, I, I want to actually throw a follow-up question that act, that came earlier, and um, I think it's a good one. So I'd like to circle back to it, and I think I think maybe this is something that you could talk about uh, the uh, college yeah. a little bit. Um, but but earlier, someone wanted to know what we're doing to help women be better represented with jobs and in the industry. So I'd love yeah. to give you a chance to answer that. Sure. So again, when we first started the company, um, and as Verda mentioned, paying women was one of our main goals. I think, you know, you look at all the different reasons for a company like the Gamers to exist. And of course, there's the, um, you know, help working on the toxicity and all of that stuff. But women in the industry is right up there. And um, we are doing a number of things that I can get to. But the big thing that we're doing is, you know, after doing research and figuring out all the different ages and, and you know, who's in our community and why are the numbers skewed, it became very clear to us that if we are going to make a difference for women in the gaming industry, that we need to um, address the college esports and gaming community very intentionally. So um, we have spent the last six months, you know, networking, researching, meeting everybody that we possibly can. And we're just about to launch our college, um, you know, division or our the Gamers Collegiate is what it's going to be called. So we have details coming on it in about a week that will be publicly announced. And we're so excited. But basically, it's going to be a number of touch points um, where college aged gamers can um, connect with us. And so at some colleges, that may look like a chapter program. At other colleges, it may look like, you know, various, a number of things coming up that, like I said, will be announced soon. But we want to make sure that we have relationships with um, college students because who we do have relationships with is companies in the industry, and we can facilitate those. We have spent the past year doing a lot of work um, to meet the, you know, the, the women who represent um, some of the decision-making in the industry. We've got some really wonderful supporters and advisors. And we um, we just hosted a professional boot camp in March where a lot of them spoke about how to get into the gaming industry professionally. We'll continue to host events like that on a consistent basis. Um, our college uh, community will, of course, have access to our Discord and we you know, we're always going to be facilitating conversations, pathways to careers, connections to mentors. It's part of who we are. Um, so more to come on that. Um, I don't know if we've officially said this yet, but we are, you know, the Game Hers, G-A-M-E-H-E-R-S. And you can find us anywhere um, that way and find out information about our college, upcoming college initiative and everything else we're doing. Thank, thank you for that, Rebecca. Uh, the, the other thing that we just wrapped up was a weekend long professional boot camp uh, that where we had mentorship, uh, mentorship sessions. We had industry leaders from all over come on and um, graciously give, give their time to speak with um, women about different different things going on professionally in the gaming industry. So that, that was super dope. Um, that also is on our YouTube. So if anyone wants to check that out, um, <clears throat> another great question came in. So I'm just actually going to read this to make sure I do it justice. Any suggestions on how, how to find co-founders collaborators in COVID have any gaming entrepreneur groups with interesting and authentic idea exchanges developed since we are in a sans in-person events? Such a good question. Um, who wants to take this one? So such a good one. Well, I know that Rebecca's going to say Clubhouse and LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I mean, I think the issue with Clubhouse, obviously, is that I, I think it's still iPhone only at this time. So I um, so if you are if you do have an iPhone, I really do think you can go through on Clubhouse as well as LinkedIn to find folks. Um, I think that like actually all of the social media spaces are a good place to mine for other people that are similar to you um, and like minded. And I think that shoot your shot, like send a message um, and don't just say hi. You know, have just, I think, similar to what Laura said about giving people something to, like, literally giving them something to work with, something to respond to, right? Maybe it's an article that's really interesting. Maybe it's like, hey, I have this really cool mm -hmm. idea. What are your thoughts about dot, dot, dot in said idea, right? Be as specific as possible. And don't be offended if someone doesn't get back to you, because sometimes it's just really hard, particularly during this time. Um, and I think because we are all over inundated be with emails and all of the messages. But those are a couple of the, I think those are definitely the spaces to seek that out. And I will say again, right, like within your circles of, um, if you are gaming, like I think having conversations about the things that might not be related to the game are, are mm. also where you will find these places and these spaces. Um, we have a Discord, you can come on there. I think you can also just join a lot of other people's Discords to do a similar thing. So I just wanted to put that into the space. So I think it's harder, but it's not impossible. And I think one of the beautiful things I think about that I um, have leaned into within the gaming space is that you can form these relationships without ever actually meeting someone, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, do some video chat. Da, da, da. I'm like recently obsessed with the show Catfish, which I'm late to the game. I've never watched it before now, but like, okay, you know, do your research, make sure all of that stuff, like don't create a co-founder that, don't get a co-founder that you've never actually met. Mm -hmm. That said, I think there's all of that as well, um, those spaces. So Clubhouse, LinkedIn, other socials, if that's where you kind of like get down, but make sure that you're really specific about your ask, but shoot your shot. I love that. By the way, I just have to pause for a second. So let me see if I'm correct in that. I know Rebecca so well. I've worked with her for so many years that when she was off camera, I'm going to guess she was plugging in her computer. Was I right? Exactly. <laughs> it was, I almost panicked that it died. <laughs> but, um, Kristen, I, the, who asked that question, also DM me on LinkedIn because I have a possible few other um, people I can ask about gaming specific entrepreneur groups. I, I and off the, I don't know them off the top of my head, but I will find you some. Uh, another great question that that just came in: What red flags should we try to avoid when signing on to a company or even forming our own? I want to I want to kick this to the co-founders, but I I, I have a quick um, answer not answer for that, and that is it's so interesting you just asked that because. Um, who was I on? Rebecca and I were on a call last week with a woman who um, started her own law firm and she has a bunch of really cool partners and they want to help women navigate that question. And she actually has offered to do an article for us on that. What red flags to look for, how to properly protect yourself when dealing um, with brands, when dealing with esports companies, um, so I, I hope to have that out in the next few weeks, but thank you. Thank you for asking that. And, and I, and, and hopefully we'll have, um, something you can read in more detail that helps, but, um, I just spoke a lot, but I want to see if my co-founders have anything to add to that. So, um, I'm going to speak on the point of, um, starting your own business, um, versus joining a, another business. And that is you. It, it, it may seem like, well, I'm just starting. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to uh, trademark my name or I don't need to, you know, document everything. From day one, document everything, get your name trademarked immediately. Um, and guess what? If, if the trademark is taken, get a new name. Um, also, mm -hmm. you know, you you just want to sometimes you think oh it's just my little small thing what do i but you but no it's not just your little small thing it's your business and you want to protect yourself and remember your business is going to grow so just make sure you do all the things you know that that businesses need to do to start up financial wise you know get you know start a bank account you know respect yourself and your business and do everything that a huge corporation would do for yourself. A lot of these things you can do not for a lot of money. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I would say right from day one. 
I love that. Yeah, I think for the entering a company um, perspective, as someone who's worked in a lot of organizations, I think um, the first red flag is um, that they have a really high turnover rate mm -hmm. um, in the roles that you might be interested in or just in general. And when I say high turnover, are people actually staying at the organization, right? So I think that's really important. Who's been here? How long are they here? And then the other red flag is um, the inability for whoever you are being interviewed by to answer questions about what is the culture like here? What is it like to belong in this organization? And how will you measure my success if I were to join your organization? If those questions are not able to be answered, then I think those are red flags. Love that. Yep. Um, you, you all may or may not know this, but I have to share it. My co-founders are gonna laugh because I'm obsessed. The other thing is um, before you start telling the world the name of your company in addition to doing some research on on trademark also see if the domain is available there's a great site i'm sure you guys are all i know my co-founders vert is dying um there's a site called godaddy and you can type in um your name idea and you can see if it's if it's taken or not um which saves a lot of time and energy because if it's taken it probably shouldn't be the name of your company yeah. Um, I also had a lot of fun selling domain names. Right? <laughs> That's why we're laughing. Yeah. So, so many okay. domain names. So many. I have so many. I bought so many domain names. So uh, the one that I am, I am kicking myself for not buying. Because usually, by the way, they're super cheap, y'all. Like eleven dollars, seven dollars. They're, they're they're not that expensive. But there was one years ago um, that was two thousand dollars, and it was Duber Uber. And it was like before marijuana was even legalized in a bunch of places and whatever. And I was like, oh God, that's such a good name. And sure enough, Uber just announced, I didn't even tell you all this. It's Uber just announced, I think last week that they're going into the pot delivery business using that same model. Oh my God. Uh, so that means, so that connects to this other thing that I'm going to say, which is trust your gut. Yeah. So the other thing is that a lot of times, like there's a, there's something that co that like will pop up for you, a feeling like be mindful of where is that? Is it in your chest? Is it in your stomach? And you're like, Oh, right. Will you regret that thing? Will you regret not asking that specific question? Trust your gut. And I say that a lot. One, because one of the things that's really important to us and to me as a woman who's founding a company is that we get to found it the way that we want to as women. We don't have to replicate what's out there in the world because that's the way to do it or that's how a man does it or whatever. Like you get to actually be yourself. And one of the things that I think that many women can be, you know, pretty intuitive, but we're told to kind of like choke that down. That doesn't make any sense. How can you be driven by that? Trust your gut. Do your research. Yes. But also trust your gut. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's there for a reason. It's actually, you know, second brain, as they say. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's two questions that came came in that are somewhat similar. Um, so I'm gonna read one of them and um, hopefully um, the, the other questions that's similar will, will feel this is properly representing what you asked too. But are there any prevalent signs to tell if a company or individual is being superficial or genuine about their diversity and, and uh, diversity initiatives? I'll throw this out to whoever wants to take it. Uh, I can, I can go ahead Rebecca, jump in and say, ahead. yeah. So, um, I think one, just one thing I'll say right off the bat is look at who, um, they are, you know, who already works at the company and, um, and, and what, what, you know, what their representation is. I think that one thing we've tried to do is right as we, you know, sometimes it's easy when you're a startup to say, well, we don't. We don't have the resources to have somebody help us with HR. We don't have time to think about um, diversity from an early stage. And I know that for us, that has been something that has been important um, right from day one. And so that's that's what I would say as a first step. Um, if they are acting like they have it perfectly and they don't say that they're still figuring it out, then they're not being genuine. Nobody has this all the answers to this right now. And so I think that one, if they're not honest with you about their challenges, then that's not genuine. 
Two, if they are not able to back up what they are saying with um, with numbers and or a person for you to talk to about that in the company, not them, in the company, then they're likely not being genuine about it. And if you see that all they're doing is putting statements out about supporting this and supporting that and it's everywhere, and then you peel back the layers and you see that their board is not diverse, their leadership is not diverse, their, um, their certain teams, someone had put in the chat how in some places like women are kind of steered towards like the artistic side of game dev and not the programming side. Those are the things that you will see. And if you see that and they're, then they don't say these are our plans to rectify that, those are some of the ways that you know whether they're genuine or not with those initiatives. I think it's just continue to ask the questions, but understand and know that um, people are not there yet. Like very few are there yet within the, within the, um, within the gaming industry. Mm. Agree. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about marketing. Um, I, I, marketing is so important, and I, I want to frame it in in marketing with a with no or a limited budget, which we've definitely struggled with. So I'd love to frame it. And Laura, I, I think I'll start with you here. We we the gamers we have an app coming out in beta this summer. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that app and specifically some ideas we have on marketing that app with our very limited budget. Yeah. So yes, we are very excited. We are coming out with an app uh, this summer. Uh, the purpose to, you know, again, meet other women who game, uh, play with, find people to play with uh, immediately, um, form connections and, you know, it it's starting an app is a is a big endeavor, and and you want a lot of people to know about it. But so, what do you do on a limited budget? Well, you know, you go back to the people you know and the people that you've already formed relationships with, and that respect what you're doing and want to help you amplify what you're doing. So, for us, you know, all of our nominees and our finalists and all these amazing women on our discord that we've connected with we we know that they're they're going to want to help us so like i go back to the my beginning statement is just ask ask people hey do you know anyone that might you know be interested in this app you know could you let them know about it but not just let them know about it here's what you can say to let them know about it um but really um just organic um spreading the word is really the best form of marketing because it's just there are people who support you and love your mission already so you know they're going to be great fans of yours um so i i would definitely recommend just reaching out to all people you know that really support what you're doing make it as easy as possible for them to spread the word perhaps make a call to action in that and when when you spread the word like hey you can join my friend's awesome business newsletter you get tips on business every day and here's the link to join it so you would send that to all the people you know that might know other people who are interested in business so um that's how that's how i you know vision on a limited budget budget is using your resources that you've already crafted and formed and um I, I love that you said that, Laura, and I think it's really important. I, I think um, it, don't create buzz about something until there's a call to action, because sometimes you only get one chance with people. So ask yourself, what do I want this person to do with that information? Do I want them to go to my website? And then what? Do I want them to click on this link? Do I want them to download the app? Like, what do I want them to do? Um, and I actually, I think we all find ourselves trying to be purposeful when emailing people that same thing. Like I, Verna mentioned this earlier, um, when you're connecting with people, ask some, don't, don't keep it open-ended. Um, and I think that's sometimes a hard thing to remember. I know it's, I know it's hard for me. Um, Rebecca, I'd love you again, since this is about, you know, building a business, I'd love to get your thoughts on sponsorships how to get sponsorships for a newish and or smallish company. Cause I know this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, it's a great, um, it's a great question to follow what Laura just talked to because at the beginning of a company, you have to sort of establish yourself first, but from day one, I think 
it's important to start identifying who strategic partners in the industry will be. Maybe they're not necessarily in the industry. So the, from the minute we started, we, we started looking at, you know, which brands um, are endemic to the gaming industry, which are not, but are already, you know, working at, with certain companies in the gaming industry. Also, which brands um, are aligned with our mission? And then beside, beyond brands, we also looked to strategically partner with, um, you know, like I was saying before, anybody and everybody that we could amplify in the industry, maybe also anybody else who is also amplifying in the industry, who's, you know, handling things similarly to what we are. I think one good tactic, like a, a tangible thing to do is at the beginning, if you're thinking that somebody might be a good candidate to be a, you know, sponsorship client at some point, um, maybe offer them a sponsor, you know, some elements of what a future sponsorship would be for free so they can see what it would be like to work with you um, and, you know, do a, do a, do a test case so that you can then share case that case studies of, of that initial sponsorship, um, you know, type um, event. So, uh, you know, examples I can give you are on social media. If you p might want to, um, emulate what it would like, what it would be like to be partnering with a brand, but work with somebody who you have an existing relationship with, have it appear as if it's a sponsorship, everybody wins, they get exposure to your community, you get to show what it's like to work with a partner. And then, you know, you can kind of build it from there. Mm -hmm. um, I think another, another sort of good tangible tactic is whenever you're talking to any sort of strategic partner slash potential future client, whatever it is, always ask what you can do for them. Because mm -hmm. um, if you are working on ways to help the people that you're partnering with, the companies that you're partnering with, the entities you're partnering with, you just, you never know how it's going to come back and help you. And so um, that's something that both at, at our old company, Mommy Bites, and at the gamers that, you know, I believe strongly in, in, in partnering and and sort of back and forth support and it just kind of intuitively it transitions to sponsorships over time can i add two things um and it, it's to the point that everything doesn't have to be transactional i think that's what mm -hmm. rebecca was saying there too is that sometimes it's a lot of times it's about building the relationship and cultivating the relationship and there are some ways to do that and then the with regard to marketing as well as what laura had said before about make sure that your things look beautiful get something like canva understand how to mm -hmm. use wix or um or um squarespace because we do a lot of that stuff on our own so just so you know i think it's important to name that there are things that we do managing the website do those things because while we are um we're a startup and so how can you learn to do those things if you have people close to you and i would say if you have kids young people like i ask them a lot because we have to be really mindful of the world that we're inhabiting is um is also for the future generations so i would just say kind of like look into those things because canva is really it's really great for social media assets um graphic content you you can find so many different things and they have a free option and so i would just say everybody get that because that'll help and they look beautiful Canva is life changing, Verda. I couldn't agree more. Truly, you can make beautiful images on there that you would never be able to make on your own and, and, and that look professional. So anyone who does can't afford a graphic designer from the start, definitely use Canva. Love that. Um, I also love what you said, Verda, about reaching out to people of all ages. Um, I think that's really important, especially depending on your market. Um, I'll just share, we we just hired our youngest member of the team. She's 19. Um, she's amazing and a powerhouse. And, and then as I was thinking that, I was thinking, am I the oldest member of our team? And I think I could be. And that's super upsetting for me as I think about that <laughs> real time right now. Um, anyway, I got a college kid. I, I think I could be the oldest person on the team. Anyway, I digress. Um, in, our, in our remaining minutes, um, Rebecca, I'd love for you to answer this one. Um, less than 3% of all women founded companies are able to raise outside capital and VC funding. Um, you were instr instrumental in spearheading our angel raise uh, that happened this summer. Um, and I'd love for you to give some advice to people on this call that are thinking about raising outside capital. 
Um, I will just pause and say, um, for for me, for our first company, we bootstrapped that start to finish. Um, this was a little bit different, and um, we we decided for a variety of reasons we wanted to raise outside capital. And at least I, for for me personally, that was it's really scary to go into a room um, of mostly men and present and ask for money and then get like rapid fire questions on, on why they should give you money. So anyway, um, we ended up having a um, successful and oversubscribed seed round, which was really fun. And we're proud of that, but Rebecca, I'd love, you know, for you to give people listening some insights. Yeah. I mean, I think we have like one minute and this could be a two hour conversation. Yeah. That being said, um, you know, I think you have to figure out, um, if you're going to raise money, you have to figure out what is your business model. So we've talked a lot about the, um, the for purpose aspect of our company, but ultimately if you're, you know, if you're going to be for profit, you have to have revenue streams. So how is that going to work? Um, you have to have also, you know, build a pitch deck that tells a story. What's the problem? What problem are you solving? Um, and then you have to have confidence. You you I, you um, identify which funders you may align with. For us, uh, as you can see, we are founded by four women, so we we qualify for some you know funds that focus on women. We obviously um, look in gaming and technology. We're also trying to amplify women, so we're a media company. You know there there are funders in all different categories, and I think the the final piece of it I would say is tell. Anybody and everybody that you know that you're raising money, that you're, you know, you, here's your company, here's your idea. What do they think? Um, and practice, practice, practice. And feel free to reach out to me directly on LinkedIn for um, to chat further about it. I, I live and breathe that stuff. So I'd be happy to talk to anybody more. She really does. Um, I would say also there's a great, there's so many free resources out there on this um, way back when. Um, in our old company, we we used to go to a conference called TechCrunch, which is still out there. Um, and I remember hearing a gentleman called Paul Graham. You can Google him. And he does, um, I think he calls it roundtable or rapid pitch, something like that, where he has companies come and it's like a shark tank. Um, and he basically just rapid fire helps them with their investment pitch. And, and, and I always think about kind of his three things. And I always try to come back to this, which is, as Rebecca said, um, what problem are you solving? How can you describe your company in one or two sentences? If you can't describe, if you personally can't describe your, your company in one or two sentences, the, other people are not going to understand what you're doing. Um, he also says, make sure you know who, who you, your competitors are and why you are different or better. Be able to answer that in one sentence. And then the last thing he says is to think about your low hanging fruit, meaning you, you probably have some really big ideas um, and that will cost the money. Is there any any ideas that are faster or, or will bring in um, capital and money revenue the easiest? May not be your big idea, but just like to, to get some money in the door. So anyway, I, I share that in our remaining remaining time together. Um, Oh, I just, I, I'll end on this. I think this is a good place to end. Someone just put about the all ages in our company. Um, my mom is 81 and plays video games every day. Love that. That's Love awesome. That. Love that. I think that's a great, a great place for us to end. Um, I want to thank you all so much for your time, your great questions. We're super excited to be here. Super excited to have met all of you. We hope to meet all of you in person at some point at you know all the events coming up hopefully as the world opens um, and again we are all four of us are available on email it's our just our first name at thegamers.com um, you can follow us on all our socials again at the gamers um, our website has some really great articles our, our community has has crafted our entire gaming um, library of articles um, we have some career spotlights that are really fun. Um, if you want to know about different different jobs in the industry, we have a podcast um, that's hosted by Kylie Vernoff, who's Susan Grimshaw and Red Dead Redemption, and she brings in some really cool visionaries in the industry, including her castmates. So that's um, on that's on Apple iTunes and and all the places you can listen to uh, podcasts. Um, and our Discord, a um, great place to kind of really get a sense of our, our community and who we are. 
Uh, so again, thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Happy Friday, y'all. Yes, and, thank uh, you so much too, Heather. <laughs> Yay! Uh, that was an awesome. That was awesome. Thank you all so much. I know that some of you have to go right now. So goodbye. <laughs> uh, you gotta go right Bye. now. Get out of here. And uh, so if the remaining, if you wanted to hang out in our Discord. Uh, discord.gg slash indie game business and then if chat if you wanted to i guess they all left if you wanted to go over to our discord uh, discord.gg slash indie game business that would be awesome there's tons of resources there we have ooh storytelling in battle royale coming up next so stay tuned Stay tuned. What's the Discord server? Oh, what is their Discord server? If you go, if you check out the Game Hers, if you just Google the Game Hers, I'm sure you can find out what their Discord server is. I don't know what it is, the exact is, but I'm sure it's easy to find. We'll be right back with the, the next talk storytelling in Battle Royales. <laughs>